Welcome back to the True Transformation Podcast with yours truly, Josiah Novak. And today, I have actually two very, very special guests, two badass ladies joining the show, Kristen Ballard and Steph View, who actually host the Activate Podcast, which I was fortunate enough to be a guest on not that long ago. And we started to cover some of the intricacies and details around female transformation. And I know I have an amazing community of female listeners and some amazing females inside of our Transform Her line inside of our coaching program. We just hung out with a bunch of our amazing ladies uh, a couple weeks ago at TT Live. And so I wanted to have Kristen and Steph back on my show to discuss everything female fitness. Now, we're veterans in the podcast game, so we just started talking about things that are top of mind, one of which was CrossFit and the need for community. Community is such a big deal. Now, admittedly, I haven't been the biggest fan of CrossFit. I have not CrossFit over the years. I have been a hater, in a sense, around CrossFit, but for good reason, and I explained some of my reasoning in today's show, but I also give props where props are due when it comes to CrossFit. But we end up talking about just the power of community, the power of finding the fitness that you love to do with the people you love to do it with. We talk about some of the things to avoid uh, when seeking out the right community and just some steps that you can take today to start creating a sustainable fitness program. And by the way, the fact that it's never too late to start, no matter where you are. I don't care if you're 35, 45, 70, 80 years old. Don't care if the kids are in college, kids are in school. It doesn't matter. You have the ability to decide that you're no longer going to be that old version of you, and you can get started today. Anyway, I don't want to give away all the good stuff. Kristen and Steph are amazing. Phenomenal podcast. You'll really enjoy this one. So without further ado, we're just going to get right into it. Sit back, relax. Enjoy the show with Kristen and Steph from the Activate Podcast. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, before we jump into today's show, I just wanted, and I know I'm going to make you wait to hear from Kristen and Steph, but I just wanted to let you know our sponsor of today's podcast is Butcher Box. Butcher Box is your go to for high quality meat delivered right to your door. Not just meat, by the way, seafood, shrimp, oh, and chicken nuggets. Yeah, I said it, chicken nuggets. If you have kids like I do, or if you're just a chicken nugget fan like me, and you enjoy the occasional stop at Chick-fil-A, but you don't want to be going to Chick-fil-A all the time because, you know what, it's not the healthiest thing, and it's you know kind of inconvenient to have to stand in the drive through for 15, 20 minutes, even though the people who work Chick-fil-A are just amazing, by the way. Shout out to the Chick-fil-A staff. Nonetheless, my kids love Chick-fil-A, and ButcherBox has been a staple in my routine for quite some time. Getting meat from them is super convenient. Makes it easy to grill out, especially in the summertime, and enjoy all the high-quality nutrition that comes from high-quality meat. Anyway, I work with the CEO of ButcherBox. He's one of my clients. So I said, hey, listen, I want you all to sponsor my podcast because I love your product, and I want my clients, and I want my listeners to get hooked up. And so they said, say less. Here's what we'll do. We'll do 10% off their first order. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash true. That's T-R-U-E. You'll get 10% off your first order plus... Plus, get this, free chicken nuggets for a full year. Full year of chicken nuggets, which is a lot of chicken nuggets. I'm just going to tell you that. So you'll never be stuck without some chicken nuggets in your freezer ever again. Plus, you'll get the best steaks, best salmon, best shrimp, best chicken that money can buy. So go to butcherbox.com forward slash true. Check them out. Use the code true at checkout to save 10% off your first order. And by the way, get chicken nuggets forever for free. Well, for a year. But anyway, you get the point. Anyway, let's get to the show. Kristen and Steph from Activate. See you guys soon. All right. So I was actually, your name came up the other day, uh, Kristen. I was over in uh, Manassas and I was working out with the crew at Fit Body Boot Camp. And I brought up the fact that on our podcast, the one I came on your show, yeah, you called me out right away. You were like, hey, you like didn't show up. Like you totally <laughs> everybody. You suck. <laughs> and so I said, all right, well, let me, you know, we need to get Kristen out here for one of these. We do Wednesday workouts now over there. Um, nice. And we also do all the DECA, 
the deck of fits. There's one April 30th. It might be sold out, but um, you could do I teams. hope it's sold out. I want to well, do the deck of fit. Maybe yeah. I need to fly up with y'all. You should. You, well, there's teams, so you can do the two-person team. Funny enough, I'm actually not doing any of it solo. I might if Chris, the owner, sneaks me into a heat, but uh, there's two clients who requested to do the team with me, so I'm doing the deck of mile with someone and then the deck of strong with someone. But anyway, nice. Kristen, you, you need to come out and, and we need to see – See what you're all about, because she's a savage, dude. I'm I've willing. Heard. I'm <laughs> willing to work out. I th- I just think that was the perfect. Um, just that was that was exactly our personalities right there. I said I hope it sold out, and Steph said I'll fly there. <laughs> but here's another thing, like so, Kristen, like she'll come to my spin classes, you know, and she hates it. She like absolutely hates it, you know. And I'm like, this is the best ever, and like I really, really want to be a CrossFitter, but like I I'm not, you know. Um, I do my own CrossFit workouts and I go and work out with her and, and I'm, and you know, she gets nervous about things sometimes, but I was so nervous to work out with her and we crushed it, but I was like, Oh my God, I hope I don't mess up. I hope I don't hold her back. You know? And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) but I think, did we finish first that day or second? I don't know. Probably. I probably, I I could probably go back and look. That was first out. Um, I I just, when I worked out at fit body bootcamp, I was Vanessa, our friend Vanessa sent me the workout. And I remember being like a 55 minute AMRAP. What? <laughs> like I'm from, I'm from CrossFit. We did 15 like 15 minutes, minutes, man. <laughs> yeah, it's eight minutes. Then we're done. <laughs> exactly. I remember you In saying that. Out. I said an AMRAP for 55 minutes. Yeah. Yikes. So Vanessa is the true savage here. <laughs> she really well, is. Yeah. Vanessa did say something about how Kristen's too competitive. So she doesn't come because oh. she's, she's too competitive. <gasps> That's what she said. That's just her words, not mine. Don't shoot the messenger, but that's. It's okay. It's okay. She's not wrong. I do have a, I, I, it's a problem almost, but I think it serves me well. Honestly, I, I, there's I nothing wrong to, with competitive. I try to compete against myself, but yeah. other people around motivate me. Okay. Like I'm not somebody who can go down in <laughs> my basement and get a really good workout. I need people around me to, yeah. to push me and motivate me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's uh community and- is key is key it is yeah. key. we we've seen that time and time again with our people like the you know working out with you know one person or whatever is cool but as soon as you're surrounded by a group of people all doing similar things the energy and the vibe really picks up quite a bit yeah totally that's what i love about uh, that's what i love about crossfit is the community <laughs> aspect it's my favorite part but um Along those lines, I'll tell you that I've noticed recently that, well, so there's this one girl in particular, and I could be her mother. I have to keep reminding myself, like, <laughs> I could be her mother. Um, but she gets she gets ahead of me in a workout. And what I notice about myself, and something I actually wanted to talk about, like, I used to be a quitter. Yeah. I would give, give up. Like, I'm talking, like, fall down on the ground <laughs> and just be done. Like, I'm done. Like, I was in cross country my, like, sophomore year of high school, and I had, like, three finishes and then, like, 12 DNFs because I just, like, people would get ahead of me, and I hate that about myself. For the longest time, I wouldn't even talk about it because it's so contra- contrary to who I am now, um, but I used to be such a quitter, and so what I've noticed now is, like, this one girl, especially, she'll get ahead of me. And I, we were doing this workout. It had running. I hate running. Um, and so she got ahead of me. And I noticed I kind of quit on myself. I was like, I didn't quit. But I mean, I was like, eh, she, she got me here. Like, she's got me in this one. It's okay. Keep going. Do your thing. And I finished the workout and whatever. And that is when I decided to start doing cold plunges. Because you know what? I was like, listen. Because <laughs> she can I, do a cold plunge? No. No, she could if she wanted to. But it, it's the main mental thing where it's like, I'm going to make myself go out there and do something I absolutely don't want to do every single day, because that's going to be, I know there's metabolic benefits and muscle recovery benefits. I don't care. I just want to go out there and get like mentally strong. So the next time that girl gets in front of me, I'm going to be like, no, you, you can't, you can, you can get in the freezing cold pool every single morning. You can run a little faster, sis. Like, let's, let's also this. talk about how beautiful it is because you're home is so beautiful. So when you're doing that cold, not a bad place to plunge, man, it really (laughs) looks appealing, but I have to tell you, um, one day after I saw your beautiful cold plunge, I was in the shower and I was like, all right, I'm going to cold shower. And it was for three and a half seconds that that cold water was on. And I was like, no, I don't have the scenery. So I'm out. (laughs) 
Oh my goodness. It's funny. You mentioned the cold plunge. Cause I was just down in Miami and I ran, you know, a race and I finished the race. And the first thing I saw coming out of the, the finish line was a cold plunge. They had a cold plunge set up for a booth that was there. And I just beelined it over there. And honest to God, I've never in- enjoyed a cold plunge leading up to this. Like literally I have one in my backyard. I have the ice barrel in my backyard and uh, every single time it's the worst. Yeah. yeah. This time was the most enjoyable thing I've ever done because <laughs> I went from overheating in the 80 well, degree yeah. sun. The to, Miami. No. Yeah. Humidity. Yeah. Exactly. Which we're not used to. Yeah. I mean, I did not want to get out of that cold plunge. So I was like, all right, the summer here in Virginia is, you know, hot, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, I will be in that damn cold plunge every single time I finish a run. Cause it's just heaven on earth now, right now. No, it is literally, you want to die. <laughs> Every it's 36 second you're degrees in. when I go outside in the morning. Ah, oh, it's the worst. It's the like, worst. Oh, and it's covered in frost. I'm like, what am I even doing? But also. <laughs> <laughs> and how yeah, long you, are you out there? I try to do three minutes is my goal. Oh, just three minutes. How long did we do cryo? I don't even know. Just we did like cryo a couple seconds. times. Yeah. Spun in circles for Whew. 60 seconds. Yeah. With gloves on. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. Three minutes in a cold plunge is a long time. I mean, I've, That's I think long. I got up to two minutes this winter and, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it, it leaves you like when you get out, obviously it's great because endorphins are super high dopamine and all that fun stuff. But two minutes felt like 20. Yeah. Well, in the, the part, the hard part for me is warming up after like that's the whole thing is that you can't go run inside and get in a hot shower take a hot bath or hop in the sauna like the whole point is to give your body that well that's where the metabolic benefits come in i would assume is because your body has to work so hard to warm back up (laughs) right but it will take me hours to get warm so thankfully it's just like it's about two hours till i get to the gym and then i i warm back up but man i'm taking my little boy to school and he's like hanging his head out the window and he's like ripping his jacket off he's like mommy it's so hot in here. I'm like, no, baby, I got a hat on and <laughs> on <the steering> wheel. <laughs> my body's in shock. It sounds yes. like the worst. I have to find something that's comparable, but that's not that like the reasons why I moved to Florida and you know what I mean? Like I am not that girl. <laughs> well, at least you have the Florida heat though. That there, there is yeah. that there's a light at sure. the end of the tunnel. You know, yeah. it's like you go in the 30 degree water and then you get out into 35 degree weather. You're like, that's yeah, not exactly. Yeah. Pleasurable. Not exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So CrossFit, you, you, you mentioned getting into CrossFit. So just to speak freely on CrossFit, you know, there's a lot of negativity surrounding CrossFit, right? But it's interesting. You mentioned a couple of things that I think are positives about CrossFit, which I think people miss oftentimes, but you mentioned the competitiveness in the community, right? Being around other people doing hard, hard stuff, and you going, oh, well, I probably wouldn't do this by myself. So For it's sure. great to have people around me. Um, I don't know what it, maybe, maybe I'm wrong on this, but I feel like females in general are better at community than men, right? Men kind of suck when it comes to, I don't want to say bonding or surrounding yourself with a pack or whatever. It's, we tend yeah. to be at times more lone wolf types. But women, at least from what I've seen, and maybe I'm way off on this and you can correct me, but I feel like you're better at going, well, let me be around other people. My wife is a perfect example. She goes to these classes at life. I give her, I give her crap for, I'm like, you need to do real resistance training, like hit the weights hard. She's like, you don't get it. Like, I just like to be around other people doing similar things. I can't go deadlift with, you know, yeah. 20 women, three sets of 10. And there's right? some great trainers at Lifetime. Just saying, I wish I was still there to work out with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are some good trainers at Lifetime, better than your run of the mill yeah. you know, gyms usually. But yeah. So let's, let's talk about that first. Cause I think community is such a big aspect of fitness. Um, and CrossFit is, is obviously got it dialed in and it's leaked into man, every, every Avenue of fitness, I would say CrossFit really was the, the starting point for a lot of these communities that have been built over the years. 
Yeah, well, I love, so community is my favorite part of CrossFit, truly. It's the people that keep me showing up there every single day. I think it's great. One, for me, it was great to get out of an all women-based, like, boot camp type of thing, because I think, sure, we're great at community. We're also great at cattiness and comparison, and it get, it can get kind of icky for me. That's just yeah. my thoughts on that. I've been at several boot camps, and that was just kind of the theme for me. So going to a gym with a bunch of dudes, but then there's like a core group of gals that like, we just, that are like, dudes. it just, <laughs> wor- right. Kind of, it just works. They're stronger it than just dudes. works. Yeah. And I, my personality is to walk in and try to make everybody laugh. Right. That's just who I am. I, I enjoy <clears throat> making people laugh. And so it's very easy to like break the ice that way. I walk in with a joke and we're all friends. Um, and then there's just, there's just that, not that cattiness. There's not that competition. Everyone is cheering for the other person. You know, it's high fives and fist, fist bumps. It's, um, and I, I think too, you're just working so, so hard, hard and you yeah. all have that in common. You know, you're, you're just killing yourself every single day, but you love it while you do it. Right. Or especially when you're done. Um, but it's just the most amazing thing for me. And the other part about that I had noticed, and it could have been just me too, but what I noticed at boot camps, where it's primarily just women is it's a lot focused on like, oh my gosh, I burned 600 calories or, you know, it's very diet culture-y inside of some of those boot camps where at CrossFit, I've never heard a person say how many calories they burned. I hear people talking about how much weight they pulled or, you know, how maybe how fast they did something, but no one's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I burned 657 (laughs) calories during that workout. So that was really great for me because I was really sucked into, um, you know, the obsession of, losing weight and calories and comparison and all these things. So that part of CrossFit has also been amazing. And there's so many cool things you can do. I mean, we have people competing all the time. I, I, I was humbled to the core at a CrossFit competition. Someone lied to me and told me I'd be good at it. And so I did it (laughs) uh, without knowing. Um, And it was, it was humbling, but I was also so glad I did it but then also like injured for 11 months with a yeah. <laughs> with a shoulder injury. So you got to be careful, but it was also just something I would have never experienced otherwise. And you have a great gym with great trainers, you know, for me too, I always, you know, I do the kilo app, which is CrossFit at home or whatever I teach spin. So obviously that's my jam. Um, that's how I create community. Um, and I do think it starts from right. Like the leadership quote of how that group of people will go. But what I loved about spin is it was as many men as women. And I agree. I don't like to, we don't, we just don't get into that kind of thing. Um, but for me, what CrossFit was is the first day I walked into CrossFit, it was down here, you know, it was a Saturday, Saturday is my favorite day to work out. It was a partner workout. Some guy was like, Hey, you want to be my partner? I'm like, yeah. And you know, I think that I can throw up 17 hang power cleans in a row. Cause he's only doing four. And then I'm injured for six months and can't pick up a bar. <laughs> It is very humbling though. So, you know, mm-hmm. someone like me, I'm like, yeah, I'm a savage. I'll go all in. And then you walk in there and you're like, oh, okay. Just kidding. Yes. There are some savages in CrossFit. I mean, I, the physiques too, like, I mean, people think performance and, you know, physique have to be separate, but if you take a look at some of these CrossFit people, I mean, they're in like yeah. absolutely insane shape. Right. Yeah. It's, you brought up a lot of good points about CrossFit. I think, especially for our female audience listening, um, I think one of the biggest hesitations that I see from females is to get into lifting weights, right? Yeah. Even to this day, even though, you know, you, you all preach it, I preach yeah. it, we're just, you know, exhausting the topic, but lift weights, fit, ladies. <laughs> yeah. The weights, you know, if you want to have curves, if you want to have tight, whatever, you know, tone, whatever it comes from weights, mm-hmm. right? starving yourself and just doing endless amounts of cardio or Mm -hmm. what I think oftentimes is even worse, like like the feel good lifting, right. Where it's like light, but just, let's just wrap it out. You know, (laughs) Uh, the Jane Fonda workouts or whatever, (laughs) Um, you know, there's just a lot of hesitation to, to lift. And I think, you know, maybe some of it is warranted with injuries, right. But CrossFit, Mm -hmm. at least from what I've seen, there's just like anything in fitness, there's the good and the bad, right? So like the good CrossFit gyms are going to instruct you on how to do things properly, 
right? Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's safety built in, there's form correction. And then obviously as form breaks down, there's substitutions or, hey, let's just call it a day. Um, but it, it really builds lifting into just your, your workouts, right? With the competitiveness, with the community, with the cardio vibe, right? With the mm -hmm. wads, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's got that right. You know what I mean? That, that is one part of CrossFit that I've always been a fan of. It's got people yeah. doing the Olympic lifts on a regular basis yeah. as just a foundational part of their program, which is honestly, it's vital for everybody. Yeah. I think for, for me specifically, our gym, Caleb, the owner and head coach, he is incredible. So knowledgeable. I mean, there's nothing you can't bring up to him and he can't tell you, you know, okay, let's check your mobility here. I think doing this stretch would be amazing for you before you squat or before you this or after this. And, you know, he's just, I mean, absolutely on top of it. And mm. such an amazing example for all of us. But so that's a huge part yeah. is if you're looking for a gym and you're going to get into something like CrossFit, you, I feel really safe there because they're, mm. they're not going to push you. They're going to push you, mm. but they're not going to push you to an injury. Right. And if mm. you do come up against something, they're absolutely just so knowledgeable and so helpful in what you can do and how you can scale and how you can stay safe. And, um, you know, I think a, a huge mistake that we make is we, we get hurt and we quit and movement is medicine, you know, like you've got to keep yeah. moving. And, you know, even Steph mentioned on ours, like soreness, people don't go to the gym because they're sore. Um, I, we did, we did, um, heavy deadlifts the other day, five rep max. I've never done that before. And well, after you I, did like 600 of them too, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I had a soreness in my back that I've never felt before. My back was not injured, but it was a soreness. Like I'm yeah. still fighting it. Um, but it's just like, I, can, I just can't explain. Like I, so I went the next day, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do what I can here. Right. So I did the strength and then I, I rode the bike cause I, it was running and something else. And also I hate running, but I, it was going to blow <laughs> my back up. Like there was no denying that that workout was going to blow up my back. So like, no, please ride the bike, take a rest, do whatever you need to do. But, um, I think that's, that's what, especially our gym is all about. But mm. I want you to tell me what the bad things are because I kind of want to fight a little. So like, Ooh. what, what <laughs> are you going to say are the spicy. bad things? <laughs> I think too, out. I just wanted to say, like you were saying, like this whole thing of women don't want to lose, lift the weights or they just want to run or do whatever. And like, also, you know, you and I talk a lot about fasting. Like I'm, I coach lots and lots of women and it's just still this whole mindset because of the diet culture, the whatever and this has been for 40 years, you know, a women aren't eating enough. So they don't actually have energy to lift the weights or to sustain any of that, or they're not building muscle. They're not seeing the fruits of doing the work, um, because they're, they're literally not fueled properly. Right. So, I mean, lucky 100%. for me, I never got into running at all anyway. So it is weights <laughs> and spin for me, but <laughs> Yeah, no, I, the nutrition part, and, and don't worry, I'm, I'm going to bring up a couple of bad things, but <laughs> the, uh, the nutrition part is, is massive because I think so many women would, would be empowered by yeah. just going after performance, yeah. right? And fueling your body and, and stop the starve, the, the, you know, controlled starvation. I mean, yes, in a sense, any kind of calorie deficit is a form of starvation, but on the, on the scale of things, most women fall into like the really low calorie extreme dieting. Yeah. And of course, like it kind of makes sense because if you're taking in low amounts of protein, low amounts of carbs and fats, naturally, I think there's some kind of subconscious thought of like, I shouldn't be lifting. And yeah, because your body's not going to recover properly. Right. You're not going to even need the fuel that you're, you know, whatever that's supposedly available. But I talk to women all the time who are like, yeah, you know, I can't eat that much protein or I can't eat that many carbs. And I say, yes, you can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Once you start creating the demand, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. It's like, yeah, you can't eat it right now because you're sitting on the couch watching, you know, you on Netflix or whatever <laughs> over and over again. You know, you're at 900 calories for the day <laughs> thinking you're eating enough. That's what I love. Every woman I work with is like, oh, trust me, I'm eating enough. And then they show me their, sure. you know, log for five days and they've never gone over 900 calories. Like, well, in a perfect world, like, you know, obviously, well, okay, we can get into some bad stuff. So, like, <laughs> I would say CrossFit in my eyes is a great, 
uh, and I always talk about fitness as like, it's, it's basically the world is your oyster when it comes to fitness. Like there are no rules. Like people yeah. should really explore all the different things. Like I've done tons of wads, tons of Murphs over across the gyms. Like they're tons of fun. Like I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. I do think that for people who have been out of the game for a while, I think there needs to at least be a phase where mm -hmm. they're building a strong foundation to be able to handle some of the things. And I get it right. CrossFit gyms are just like most gyms where you got to make money. And you know, like the one you have sounds phenomenal. I mean, especially someone who takes great care in all the different aspects, like mobility and all of that. That's such a massive part, but they got to, they got to put, put, you know, butts in the seats for lack of a better term. Oh. Right. And sometimes I see people going to do CrossFit. I'm like, listen, you know, I think there's a phase in your life coming up soon where you can totally do CrossFit for a long time, but you have no shoulder mobility. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't squatted ever yeah. <laughs> yeah. except to use yeah. the bathroom. Um, yeah. and <laughs> you know, like you're, you're literally, you don't even know what an overhead press is. Right. Yeah. So yeah. going and doing hand cleans. Now I know a good CrossFit coach is going to be like, Hey, listen, let's pump the brakes. Right. You're just going to yeah. do the, the mobility bar, you know, that type of thing. Um, but I still think there's probably an argument for even a CrossFit gym. Like if I were running across the gym, I would have specific, and maybe yours does, maybe I'm just spouting total nonsense right now, but I think that there should be a class where it's like, Hey, foundations, right? Foundations, you're gonna come in. Yes. Yep. You're going to learn mm -hmm. push, press, pull, hinge, all that stuff for a good 12 weeks. Yeah. Your cardio is not going to be running. It's not gonna be wads. We might get into the little basic wads, but like, it's going to be walking bike, you know, maybe some learning how to run properly mechanically. Yeah. Right. So you're not heel striking and whatever that would be phenomenal. And then go, Hey, then you get to graduate into CrossFit 101, right. And you get to start the basics and get rolling. Problem is people, and it's probably driven by the consumer, not so much the business, but consumers yeah. want results fast. So like, yeah, but Kristen goes here and she looks the way I want to look. So I'm doing her class and you're like, Jenny, you're 70 pounds overweight. Right? <laughs> yeah. Your body is already working out 24 seven, you know, mm. like you're lifting already. You just don't know it. Yeah. So I think sometimes the CrossFit community should just do a better job of like say, Hey, CrossFit is like something you graduate to. It's like, Hey, like my, my kids, you know, play flag football. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not necessarily ready to go right into tackle, you know, like they got to learn the basics, learn how to move their body. I'm not going to put pads on them and go, all right, go tackle that kid who's 150 pounds. And it's like, you're going to die. Right. Yeah. Um, and an injury mentally can really like an injury to Kristen's not the same thing as an injury to Susan over here who just started her program two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. She, her, she Susan, breaks Susan her shoulder. Be She's going to be pissed, <laughs> going to be yeah. wine and cheese and you know, whatever for the next three weeks because her shoulder hurts right and not I, like us who's like we can't go i can't do shoulder press yeah today. kristen's like it's all good I'm like my other shoulder's fine yeah. <laughs> yeah kristen's just setting prs on the air bike like it's no good <laughs> it's like, oh, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah well so that's a disappointing argument because i can't actually argue with it <clears throat> um, but i feel like i'll keep working on this <laughs> yeah uh, foundation is definitely important and i came yeah. from uh, years of boot camp i had been a few months in another CrossFit gym before I ended up where I'm at. But I 100% agree that if you just jump into something extreme, like CrossFit can be, um, you're probably going to end up getting hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. They saw me walk in. They're like, oh, clearly she's good to come. Yeah. And I had no business throwing around the weight that I was throwing or 16 of them at a time. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and I think the one thing for me is that there's a lot of things just like, because of how much spin I've taught, for instance, like my hips don't work like they should for some of that stuff. I was squatting completely wrong. You know, I'm actually, I was blowing my back big time, even from home. Um, cause I kept going heavier, but I wasn't doing the things properly. So like now I've had to like really start over again. I'm working with another, you know, all coaches and e coaches. We talk about that all the time. Like, and it's, and that's humbling too. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, I'm like using 15 pound dumbbells for a step up right now. Like what, you know what I mean? But like, 100%. you have to, you have to find that, that right thing. And that's for me for CrossFit, just because I'm competitive, you know, I don't, 
want to not RX or try to PR, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think down the road, I would love to do it, but yeah, Kristen's been, you know, she was coaching boot camp. She was coaching those caddy boot camps and, uh, <laughs> you know, work the right there for sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love, I love the community part. Uh, most gyms, you know, have a hard time making this work because there's just so many members, yeah. you know, like, yeah, there's little clicks. There's the weird person who will come up to you every time and they see you and chat your <laughs> ear off. But like mm -hmm. the great thing about CrossFit is most people, I mean, you're there to get it done, right? Yeah. You're there to work out, you know, fist bump at the end, grab a protein shake or whatever and go home. Like it's, it's a really no nonsense, but also fun type of environment. I think CrossFit gyms, you know, and I'll just put this out there. I think they are like the perfect place to host some of these like safer hybrid challenges right and now mm -hmm. it's not crossfit so of course that's my next knock you know they're kind of clicky crossfit right sure. where it's like sure. ooh, it doesn't say crossfit oh no 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 we can't that. <laughs> so that's that's an interesting <laughs> thing too because a lot of crossfit gyms are no longer crossfit affiliated right there was mm -hmm. a whole uproar about that a while back and so a lot of cro we're not crossfit affiliated um but it's cr crossfit workouts right um sure. they're making yeah. it a little harder now um with um, like the open, you have yeah. to be an affiliate to be able to judge and all these different things. But, um, yeah, I get it. CrossFit does get a bad rap here and there. I remember I was at, um, my, like my chiropractor hates CrossFit, right? Like he's like, <laughs> well, he, he just, shouldn't, he should love it. <laughs> <laughs> right. What? He, <laughs> right. He, wants, he wants me doing like yoga. And I was like, mm, it's like, AA not hating ever going to be my thing. This is true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he would always be, he, and he would be like, well, okay, you do CrossFit. So what do you, how, do you do any cardio? And I was like, you don't even know what CrossFit is. It is cardio, I, man. Noob. Total noob. <laughs> noob. Total noob. Yeah. Says our nine-year-old noob. I'm noob like, noob, cardio. what's a noob? No. She's like, bro, did you check my whoop strap? Like, uh, hello. Yeah, <laughs> Lord. On. You have no idea. <laughs> After I left that one random Saturday with Kristen, I mean, I couldn't breathe for the weeks. <laughs> well, well, I don't if I like have to, to do like one more wall right. ball and I like wall balls, you know? <laughs> yeah. Unless it's in Miami at the end of a high rocks, then you won't yeah. love wall balls. But yeah, I don't want to sound like a hater. I, I will give pro props. I'll, I'll have a secret confessional if you guys promise not to, you know, wrap oh, me We won't up. tell but, anybody. <laughs> no, I actually love watching the CrossFit games. Like it oh, is yeah. freaking epic, right? They're I mean, animals, even if you're not man. into fitness, like it's just so crazy. And it's, crazy because it is crazy. Like, yeah. you know, these people are swimming and then hopping out and like, you know, farmers carrying their canoe somewhere. Like, you know, it's like so crazy, but my thought is always like, and, and I'm in great shape, but I'm like, you know, I'm not ready for a lot of that stuff. Right. And so it, I mean, maybe, animals, I, maybe I'm being just a wuss. <laughs> right. And you're like, no, dude, you can totally hang clean and stuff. But I think it's just one of those things where you have to, it's like a sport in a sense where you got to train for it in some aspects and you got to say, all right, I am committing to CrossFit for this chapter of my fitness career and I'm going to go after, it, but I'm going to do it in a way that progresses to me over time so that I'm not like, you know, like a handstand push up to me. I'm like, holy crap, dude. I, I like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> like what? Yeah. No. For time. Don't you, oh. Yeah. No, for time. Worst workouts. Um, <laughs> don't you feel like though? Cause when I came, when I worked out with Vanessa, that 55 minute AMRAP, like, it murdered me. I, like oh, yeah. it murdered me, but because it's different. So you can be like really yeah. at the, almost like at the top of your game and whatever it is that <laughs> you're doing every day that you're used to. And then you can go do something different and it can humble the shit out of you. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you can really be like, Oh man, I thought I was in good shape. And then, but when you're doing <laughs> something that your body is not necessarily used to doing, like, you know, you could come to CrossFit. Well, I couldn't beat you, but I would love to say that. But I, you could I, mean, come to I, I no, that's not you. true. But, Let's be careful. Here. I don't want to get set up here. But <laughs> like, if I come to do a workout that you that you've been training and doing every single day for weeks and months and years of your life, that's gonna. I'm not gonna be good at that, even though I'm. You know, I'm really yeah, in shape. In great I think shape, that. Yeah. yeah. The things so, that you do. I mean, I'm in great shape, but if I go to Steph's spin class, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh yes. But yeah, there's, it's funny. I, I just had the same conversation with, uh, I, I hired a coach recently to help me, you know, do way better at these hybrid races. And yeah. he said, you know, closed chain and open chain movements. Um, you'd think they, they work together, right? So for example, mm -hmm. 
open chain is like running, you know, um, you're providing the, the power, like your whole body is basically working. Closed chain is like a row machine, right? Where, yeah, you're generating power, but the machine is really giving you power back. So I see with CrossFit, there's like uh, a lot of closed chain stuff, you know, like with resistance, you know, there's dumbbells, there's barbells, like there's all sorts of crazy stuff. So it's like, that takes a lot of just number one skill, but also yeah. practice. Like you have to get just almost comfortable with pain, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And it's funny because like stuff like running and, you know, the open chain stuff, which like burpees, I guess you could maybe throw in there as open chain. But anyway, that translates really, really well to closed chain, but closed chain stuff does not translate very well mm. to open chain. Okay. So like if you're crushing it across it and then you come do like a high rocks, you're gonna be like, holy hell, like that was hard. Yeah. Cause the running just murders you. Right. Yeah. Um, but if I'm doing a lot of running and then I go, okay, I'm going to come do like a, a wad at, at high rocks. I'll have better conditioning than the average person walking in because I've done a ton of running and yeah. that translates really well to close chain stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's an interesting thing, but I think, uh, and that's what, what I love about CrossFit too, because it does build in both. And I think that the truth of the matter is when, when people get in shape, they often go, okay, I made it now. What? Like, I mean, just go mm -hmm. back to the nachos and stuff. Cool. Yeah. Not that you can't have nachos and be in shape. That's <clears throat> totally can't, but, um, and you should, and you should you, yeah, <laughs> most definitely. just make sure it's like quest chips or whatever, but, right. um, <laughs> no, yeah, or just do the whole thing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and just don't do fat free cheese. That's disgusting. Right. Well, um, that. But I think the big secret is that you have to always have the next thing, yeah. right? So women out there who are trying to preach to like, Hey, you got to do that. You know, I think sometimes they're just like, well, all I'm going to do is lift weights, walk, and then track my calories. Like, no, mm -mm. that's just a phase, you know, yeah. CrossFit could be a whole arena that you get into for a while and it don't have to stay there. Like, but it could right. be like something you do for a few years where you're just like, man, I loved it. And then maybe it's something else. Maybe it's like yeah. back to the basics, or maybe it's, I'm going to learn how to run really well or bike or whatever. It's like, as long as you realize there's so much out there, including CrossFit, um, I think all of a sudden fitness becomes a much more of an adventure. Enjoyable. And we say all the time on our podcast, like, you know, you think you hate working out or, you know, this or that, but like, you just have to find a, the thing that you love to do and the people that you love to do it with. You know, mm -hmm. um, I was a beach body awesome. coach for years and like, yeah, I was empowering and I ran these groups, but that wasn't giving them any extra push in their quote workout. Right. You know, so you see people plateauing or Kristen and I both went to burn boot camp. nothing against burn boot camp, but like I can't know more than the coach. You know what I'm saying? Like I've got <laughs> to have somebody that's going to push me. And then, you know, not to say that some of those workouts didn't totally like crush me, but the majority of them didn't, you know, I, I would leave and be like, okay, now I could go do something else, you know? So, um, <clears throat> just the whole thing from the beginning, if you're one of those people, first of all, if you're in your forties, like I do see so many people that are just settled in the fact that they just don't work out. <laughs> like they just don't have a plan or whatever. And that just blows my mind because that is my lifeline, our lifeline. Like that is how I get through the day. Like, yes, I look forward to my workouts every single day. And if there's a day of the week that I know I can't work out, I'm dreading that, you know, and we always say like, don't, you don't want to dread your day. You don't want to push news. You don't want to like, you know, not come into your day or whatever, but all to say like, also in your forties, that's not when you quit. That's not when you stop. Like Kristen and I, and you, like we see people in their fifties, sixties, seventies, 75. I have people that come to my spin class that are 76 years old. You mm. know what I mean? Like you don't just all of a sudden stop or to the contrary, if you stopped 20 years ago, get going. Like you just mm. got to get started. You have to, you have to find the thing that you love and, and love it and do it. This is making me think, yeah, that's so good. This is making me think about um, there's, I just feel like we talked about this a little on our podcast, but like this whole body positivity movement and all of this stuff. And then what I've mm -hmm. noticed, you just said, you just recently hired a coach. I just recently hired a nutrition coach, um, to work on, I want to gain muscle. And also I want to eat as many carbs as possible, Me right? Too, like yeah. I, I don't know the people that say they can't eat the carbs. Um, <clears throat> but 
there's so much. So what I'm noticing, there's like, I have like a chat with just my coach and then there's like a group chat, right? And it's all ladies. So much, um, well, girls, I'm just giving myself some grace this week. I, this, that, and the other thing. And I'm just You're like, like, put me in the other chat. Like, eh, Where's eh, the other eh, chat? I like scroll. <laughs> Kristen because... has left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I just like, you don't got to pay somebody Dude. to give yourself grace in a chat all week, right? Like don't oh. hire the coach. Mm. Like if you're just going to be there for like, yes. oh, yeah, yeah, girl, good way to give your, sure, give yourself grace, fine. But we don't have to like, that's yeah. not part of the thing that we're doing, you know, like, okay, mm. we should be on there being like, great. You did, you did great. But you know what? Mm. I know you're going through that thing. You're going to feel so much better if you just go to get body, through it. Right? right. I just like, it's such, so interesting mm. because we're just so like, I, don't, well, I want someone to be like, no, get up and do it. I don't care if you had a bad day. Yeah. I don't care if you're sleepy. I don't care what, like get up, go do it. And that's just probably my personality too. Um, but what are you hiring the coach for, for someone to say, Oh, great job on like, you need extra help to give yourself no. grace. I don't know. Like I, I get, it. it's all important. you got to take care of your mental health. You got it. But fitness is part is uh, the biggest it part is. of yeah. taking care of your mental health. I love that you brought that up too, because I feel like in my heart, I'm a coach and in even my leadership and in like what we do and all of those things. But as I get deeper and deeper and deeper into my own, you know, like wanting to be better and push and, you know, whatever, it becomes very hard to hear that. I have people that have purchased and done many of my things that will never complete it. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would be like, oh, good. They keep on buying. Like, that's my worst nightmare. <laughs> like, I don't want you to spend one single cent. If you're not going to go all in, like, I don't do what I do for you to spend money to not follow through. You know what I mean? Like you got to eventually find the follow through because it just, and I say this in my spin class all the time too. Like, what did you come here with? How many people almost didn't even show up? You know, like you are here in order to be the best for anybody else. You have to be the best for yourself first. And if you are going to continue to let yourself down time after time, after time, here's another mic drop. You are teaching your children to fail at everything that they even ever try to start. If if that's what you're doing, if you're failing on yourself, you're teaching it down. That's different. Teach them to fail, but don't teach them to quit. Well, ex okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like failing is good. Cause you're going to learn. Failing, failing is good. Qu but I'm speaking quitting? to the quitter. Yes, absolutely. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. We fail all the time. All right. And not to say we're the best example, <laughs> Sorry, but, Mr. I will Perfect. Say, but I will say for both of us, we're boy moms. Our boys look up to us, what we're doing in our fitness. You know, they're like, Oh, I'm going to go to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, okay. Fail, fail forward, fail a million times, but quit quitting on yourself, quit yeah. spending the money you're spending all this money. And then, you know, and then it, then to even further it, oh, that didn't work. Da -da -da -da. No, you didn't work. <laughs> it didn't, it does work. You didn't work. There's probably about 50 topics you guys just went through that we could talk <laughs> for literally 50 hours on. I, mm -hmm. I'm listening to what you said and I'm like, damn, like, because there's so much there. I think number one, uh, I don't even know where to start, but I would say number one, self-mastery is such a journey. Mm. And a lot of people don't really want to take that journey because you Never. have to look inward, right? Yeah. You have to look yeah. inward. Um, along with that, there's, well, there's a couple of things. Number one, the world now, and I, once again, I'm, I don't want to get, let's go. For, let's go. No one ever gives me any, <laughs> we're right there so, with you. Know, you. <laughs> It's the last thing I want. No, that's all I do is take hate. But um, for females, and I'm a boy dad too, I have two boys. But if I had girls, right, this would be my number, not my number one, but close to it. Um, there is an addiction to attention, mm. right? And I think it probably stems from a lot of these females that you run into at home. They're not getting the attention, right? Mm. They need to, they need to get their their husband to learn how to be a better husband, right? Or they need to work yeah. together, whatever, but they're not getting the attention they want. They see other people getting lots of attention for their butt pics or their body or whatever, the cleavage and all the other stuff that they show, right? Yeah. So they get, they get into these groups and they really are seeking attention yeah. when they say things like, I just need some grace, ladies. Right. No, you don't. Number one, you don't need to be coddled because that's what got you here. You yes. know, coddling. There's no 
consequences these days for anybody's actions unless you go out and do something absolutely terrible but like eating yourself to death is a slow death you know typically Mm -hmm. um, not working out but there's this last piece that i just wanted to say about what you said about the mental health um i know you're you at least you you touched on it and like you said it's my lifeline Mm -hmm. i think that's what you said steph you said it's my lifeline i totally agree with you here's the crazy part so people who suffer from depression like deep depression 85%, and this is a real stat, but 85% of getting out of depression comes down to physical activity, Yeah, which is insane when you really think about it. 85%, I mean, 85% of anything is a lot. (laughs) It's like the whole thing. Yeah. Guess what like 10 to 15% is, by the way, just as a side note, it's community. Wow. Yeah. They say fitness is the most underutilized antidepressant so the, the world, body right? positivity movement, right? Yeah. Is literally creating future shooters. <laughs> that sounds right. terrible. But like no, that's what it is though. A thousand percent. Look at the shooters. <laughs> they, do you even lift, bro? You know what I mean? Like, like, that sounds terrible. I'm going to totally, now I'm really, now the haters are coming out. Kristen sweating. The pitchforks <laughs> I mean, are starting to march. <laughs> <laughs> but listen real talk and at least in this space we can still have real talk like you know that's a whole nother topic but i mean yeah but that's crazy right like almost a hundred percent of our mental health comes down to where your, your quote was perfect find something you love to do with the people you love doing it with that is i mean once again so if someone's like well crossfit or, dude do i don't care Pick yeah, right. a one do Pilates. That's get you yeah, do out, of, out of your house, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. Pilates. Do, do the stroller. Class, find whatever. a group of moms in the neighborhood. Like, whatever, <laughs> hey, right? I get mean, after it. Yeah. Push that damn stroller, girl. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it does, it really does. It's amazing how your fitness evolves because I, I mentioned I hate running. I started as a runner and that's probably why I hate it because I burnt myself out. But it was like I had my third baby and I was like, okay. I'm going to train for a half marathon. And that was really the turning point for me when I stopped quitting. Um, mm. I just decided like, I'm going to do this and I did it. Can right? you go I, back? And I ran I, three. Yeah. Tell us about that. You didn't actually like, yeah, you never you, about, you left that about, open loop there for us. Yeah. Like, why did you stop quitting? <laughs> well, so why did I stop? Quitting? How I did think- you start quitting? Like what you literally actually did. Yeah. I mean, I literally would pretend I tripped on my own <laughs> shoestrings and I would just fall on the ground in the middle of a run. And the girl, I, my, my coach, she would actually kick the bottom of my shoes. She would stand behind me and kick the bottom of my shoes and tell me to get up. And I'm like, I'm done. And I'm, I'm injured. I'm, she yeah, would I'm literally not. throw herself on the ground, y'all. Now she's cold plunging in her backyard and savaging oh CrossFit. Like, cleaning, oh, yeah. The, the, listen, stuff. the cross country, they would send like the golf cart out to like pick me up halfway through the thing because it's like, well, she did that again. Um, and that's totally embarrassing, but it's true. And I feel like it could give someone hope. Like if you're yes. if you've been quitting on yourself your whole life, right? There, there's there's an opportunity for you to there's become an opportunity. somebody different. And that's what I did. And I just decided, I don't know. I just decided one day, look, I'm not going to quit anymore. And maybe it yes. was my boys, you know, wanting to show my boys like, look, because I did, I quit, I quit on things. I quit on my marriage and I quit on, you know, lots of different things and our lives were hard for a while. Um, mm. But this was just something I had complete control over. Yeah. And I, um, I started making myself proud, I think is really the yeah. thing. And it, it felt so good Changes to, everything. to complete things and to do things. And suddenly I'm running, you know, six thirty miles where, but when I started, I mean, it was like 12 minutes, my husband would go out and he's like, baby, I'm sorry. I can't run that slow. I'll see you back at the house. <laughs> um, and you know, and, and then which one of us ran the half marathon? It wasn't in, um, <laughs> but one, when you just start. It, it is fast. And you start That's collecting so that fast. evidence for yourself. Well, don't expect that if I come work out with you because I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> I'm um, taking notes over here. Like <laughs> yeah, right? He's like, mm, you said this, you said this. Um, yeah. But nice. you start collecting that evidence for yourself. Every single time you do something and you follow through with something that you said you're going to do, mm-hmm. it just changes something in you, right? It changes, like, it, like, it changes it, you. 
And it, what it translated into everything else in my life. I now have a successful business. I didn't have anything before. I was just this little girl who had no idea what she was supposed to be doing in the world. And I felt purposeless. And I, Mm -hmm. I, I truly just had no passion for anything. And then it really started with, okay, I'm going to print off this half marathon training program and I'm going to do what it says. I'm going to see what happens. And that's Mm -hmm. really where it all started for me. And what I was going to say before is like fitness is really an evolution. You know, I started with running and then I got tired of running and I started going to like the freedom center yeah. to a boot camp and once a week. And then I was at another gym, you know, three times a week. And then I was there every single day. And then they asked me to be a trainer there. And then, you know, and then here I am at CrossFit and it's, it's truly the part of my life that brings me the most joy. And I get more joy out of every other part of my life because I do hundred percent. And I wanted to say, I'm glad you said all of those things because I'm sure people that don't know us too are just on here. Like, okay, easy for y'all to say, but like, we've gone through it. Okay. Mm-hmm. We've done the work. Like I was the girl that went to the gym in my twenties that then went to happy hour and smoked cigarettes and did lines. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I was you really too? good at partying and, you know, doing all of the wrong things, but you know what? I'm an all in kind of girl. Like I was all in with that. And I, you know what I mean? So, sure. um, we're not just sitting here preaching or tr- sounding arrogant. Hopefully people understand what we're saying here is, you know, you're, you have a purpose in this world. You have a lot to offer that you've never even realized so far. Um, but as long as you are allowing yourself to be just so content with like, I'm just going to give myself grace, girl, you're never going to come into your potential. Um, and even, you know, saying like I was a little girl or like, didn't know what I was going to do. You know, like I want to just give Kristen a ton of props, just even since I've known her, you know, we started our own podcast and you know, I was already in business and I loved it and, you know, all of these things. And then, you know, she decided to go into her own business and like seeing her work, like it is so incredible, um, you know, for what we do in our line of work, like we just pray for another us. And all Mm -hmm. that means is like a woman who like knows that like, you know what, there is something out there for me. Right. And you just, no matter what you just show up and you do the work, but there's no way either one of us would be showing up to do any of that work if we weren't getting our workout done in the morning first, like that is the only way that we are able to be savages in any other area of our life or to do all of the work that it took to heal all of the broken parts of us. Like we were probably two of the most broken people you've ever come across. You know, we've made all of the wrong choices and decisions. And now we are, you know, I'm, I'm not like saying we're the best thing on earth, but like we are women of faith and we have strong beliefs and we fight for what we believe in and we have big mouths. And sometimes we, you know, push the limit. And I love seeing Kristen push the limit because she used to be like, Oh God, that's, you know, they joke about me, like being the bulldog, but she's a bulldog too, you know? And it's just because she's showing up for herself first period. There's a power in the decision. Yeah. Right. I, I just had a, a show yesterday and a guy who struggled for man majority of his life with alcoholism, drugs, heroin, crack, everything, mm. right? Like couldn't come off of it. And I asked him like, how did you do it? You know, like what, what was like the moment? Like, did you like, did someone like slap you or something? Like what happened? You know, he was like, Nope. I was just sitting on a beach and I just decided not to be that person anymore. And I was yeah. like, what? And then I thought about, it and I said, you know, I had moments, I had moments like that in my life too, where it was like, I just decided that enough is enough, right? I don't want to be that person anymore. I'm going to commit to something now, right? I'm going to commit to something new, a new way of living, a new way of thinking. And really, I think like if someone can picture inside their brain, like a light switch, you know, where maybe yeah. you dim the lights and like, you're just kind of floating through, not really sure what you're not committed to anything. You quit on a lot, most everything you're a victim, right? Whatever. When you turn that light switch on, it's like, there's no going back. Like not, you're not that person anymore. Like literally in this instant, you can you die to your old self, a totally different person. Right? Like, and people are like, that's nonsense. No, it's true. You just start operating like the new version of you before the fitness results come, like before you look the part or whatever, have all the money, you just start operating differently, you know? And it's crazy how things change when you make that. But that's because you will, once you hit that next level, you're never going to accept less for yourself, right? You're only going up from there because you're going to feel so good. You're never going to expect less from from yourself after that. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, 
and and like you said, Steph, you know, no, we're not nobody's perfect. I mean, I I've, I've been a broken person in many chapters of my life. Yeah. But it's the instruction manual that gets created on how to fix those problems, right? That becomes valuable. And now you're a valuable person because you went through yeah. something. You have your experience, how you got through it, your your proof that it's possible. And I think, I mean, the purpose of life is to share those blueprints with, with the world. hundred percent. Right. Yeah. yeah. We say it Whatever all the time. Your message, your mess is your message, right? If you your didn't testimony. fail, yeah. your yeah. message, your message. I love that. That's yeah. Awesome. That's your message, awesome. your message. And a lot of this is too, is choose your heart, right? It's hard to be a drug addict on the street, you know, disappointing everyone in your life and letting yourself down every day. It's hard to choose a better life, a better way as well. You know, it's hard to show up and go to the gym every day and whatever, but choose your heart, you know, what, which one would you rather have for your life? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And it's never too late. I mean, you talked about people in their forties. I don't know about you guys. I want to live to 120. So like 40 yeah, is dude. Just like, what is that? A fourth? No, it's a third I'm like, we're life. just starting the second part of our yeah. life. If that we might not even be in the second part yet. Like we have so much room to just I mean, what do you think of improvement? I'm like, gosh, we haven't even started yet. You know, thousand percent. It's never, ever, ever, ever too late to start living better yeah. and feeling better, you know? And I think some people like women, maybe, and I know guys feel this way too, but it's like, you feel like you're so far down the wrong path. You know, mm -hmm. you look back and you've been walking for years in the wrong direction. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, just to get back to point A daunting. is like yeah. daunting. Yeah, but yeah. the truth of the matter is, is like, you can, you can get back to that point a way faster than it took you to get to wherever you are now. Cause what yeah. I tell people is you were walking at a snail's pace. You didn't realize you were walking. Yeah. Right. You didn't realize you were going down the wrong path. Like you were just inching there little bit by little bit, one ice cream cone at a time, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. One wine and Netflix at a time. Yeah. And um, listen, you can still enjoy those things, but like, now you get to take strides, like picture Kristen run a six thirty mile back. The other way, <laughs> yeah, right? dude. Like that's the pace you're going to go now. Cause your momentum is going to pick up so fast. You're going to be like Sonic, you know, my boys yeah. love Sonic. That's what I picture <laughs> going back in the other direction, you know? And you yeah, gotta, so you have to have, you know, we say it all the time. You know, I really, anything I promote, anything I talk about, any referral I give, any, anything I stand behind you guys, it's because like my integrity is everything. My word is my bond. And so are the people that are in my life. Like I am very, very careful with who sits at my table. Um, and I think that that needs to be a priority for people, you know, like the reasons why you are where you are usually are stemmed from the people that you're surrounding yourself with, um, the people, whether it's friends or your family and like, you know, sometimes you have to draw that line, you know, you have to, the only way you're going to get out of that is to take a good look around, you know, until you can take a look deep within a lot of times, you just have to take a look around and, um, you just have to know that you, again, you are made for big, big, big things. You know, you weren't mm. put here on accident. So, yeah, I always say God didn't put you here to be overweight and unhappy. Absolutely. God wants you to win, despite what all the naysayers will tell you and how it's bad to be successful. Like, no, God doesn't like imagine your kid, right? Like that's what you are, right? In in God's eyes. Yeah. And imagine your children. No one's like, yeah, I want my kid to like suffer like so hard and be overweight and just like depressed. Like, that's what I really want. That'll teach them. <laughs> right. No, yeah, we're right. like, no, we want our kids to be like this the ultimate perfect life. Like, you know, everything's perfectly tailored for them. College career. Like that's how God looks at you. He's like, man, I want this dude to be super yeah. ripped, super successful, like just happy and fulfilled, like healthy. Like, you know, like, it's not like this whole agenda to make you suffer. It's, you know, he, no, he, in fact, he weeps well, when you, when you suffer. <laughs> the agenda is actually to make you suffer, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> not gods, not gods, <laughs> right? Not gods. And yes. I love that you say that, but it like the perfect picture, like if you're having still a hard time picturing what we're saying is like, when you have a child and your child starts walking and your child falls down and falls down and falls down, you don't say, okay, stay there. Never don't walk. ever walk again. <laughs> like you're like, come on, come on, get up, get up. You know, and if you need that from any of us, if you don't know us from Adam, if you message us, we will give you that. We will pray over you. We will give you, you know, hope and confidence and, you know, all of those things. But, you know, 
find what you love, do it with people you you know, you probably don't even know who those people are yet. A lot of times, you know, Kristen, they'll say it too. Like she said, she went to those many gyms. I went to 15 gyms already since I've been in Florida, because again, I need to make sure that those people that I'm around the people that I'm empowering, I have a certain, you know, thing that I do for other people, I guess I would say, I'm trying to be very careful, but you know, like I'm, there's just certain places or situations that I will never put myself in again. Um, and, and it's not being selfish. It's just always striving for more. Hmm. Let's do this. Cause I know the ladies out there are like, all right, guys, you, you got me hooked now. I'm ready to go. <laughs> what do I do? Right. What so do do? what, what's like a quick hit list for ladies who really just want to take the power back get unstuck with their fitness, feel good again, you know, feel empowered, love the way they look, love the way they feel and all that fun stuff. What are, what would be like your top two or three things you'd say, like, this is where you start. I think for the first one is, I think you, it's important to have a strong why. And if you yeah. don't know what is your why, why are you, why do you want to get healthy? Why do you want to get fit? What's, would it change in your life? What does it mean for you? How does it affect your children? And write it down. Mm-hmm. We talk about that all the time, like in our business, like, what are you here for? Like, what do you, mm-hmm. what is your why? Why are you doing this? Because if you don't mm-hmm. have a strong why, it's going to be hard. And, and then you'll if quit. you're just not naturally inclined to want to go work out and love the gym, like, you have to fall back on that note. This is why I'm doing this. Let me get my journal out and read. What did I tell myself I was doing this for? And remind yourself of that over and over every single day, if you have to, to get your butt out of bed and to, you know, go move your body. I think that that's, um, you know, if you make it just about like, oh, well, I need to, I want to be skinny. Well, you know what? That's great. But <laughs> that doesn't last like that motivation yeah. to be skinny. That's not going to, that's not going to. Yeah. Keep and you, you don't want to be skinny. No, you, don't. you want to be strong. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I think I, I would that. say, Desire is key. yeah. Um, ask people that, you know, that do have, um, a routine, you know, um, that do love to move their body and things like that. Um, if you don't know anybody like that, just like group on or start looking at gyms or, you know, clubs or whatever it is, you know, um, that are around you most everywhere will give you like a free class pass. Uh, just, I, you know, being somebody, I mean, I do have online programs too. And although I did love doing that for a really, really, really long time, um, you do find a a lot of the people are very excited to start in the beginning, but then, you know, then you're not around people very often. And it, I feel like it's been easy for people to quit. So, Mm. you know, either finding someone, or if it is a program that somebody has to offer, you know, finding a person that's going to do it with you, that's going to hold you accountable. And like Kristen saying, your why, like your why should make you cry. Like you should know without a shadow of a doubt, like if it's not for yourself for right now, is it for your children? Is it to be a better example? Like, you know, we'll all of us here, like we want to leave a legacy. We don't want to just be here taking space, you know? And so that's why we're also you know, always constantly trying to do better is to be good. The biggest part of my why is to be an example for my son. Yeah. It's funny. The why thing, sorry to interrupt just one quick thought. I, uh, I was thinking about the why, and I think a lot of people are scared to just say like, Hey, I want to do this for me. You know, like I want to look good, dude. Like straight. And that's a great why though. Yeah. Yeah. I want to look great. great. I want to wake up and love who I see in the mirror. Right. That's a huge, that's a, that's a, that's a beautiful why that's enough. I want my spouse to be like dying to like, be right. Like, right. Like it's no shame in your game to say that. Like but people like will beat around the bush. Like I want my son to think I'm the real life Superman. I'm like, listen, dude, yeah. like he's never going to think that. Like yeah. you don't fly. You don't have a kid. <laughs> what you're yeah. really saying is I want to look like a stud. Like, yeah, just dude. Say that. And then you'll be like, hell for yeah. Sure. Right. And then, then we can lead into what that means for you. But like, it's just, yeah. People like to beat it around the bush. Cause they're afraid to just be like, straight oh, up, no. like I'm, I want to do this for me. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy where I'm at for almost 44, you know, and I just <laughs> want to keep going in that direction, you know, Sure, absolutely. There's nothing, it's not being vain. It's being proud and, you know, honoring your body is like, you're yeah, it's a big part of life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Vain, being vain. I almost feel like vanity is where I think that's where people trip up is, is being vain typically stems from like a results based hmm. mindset, right? Where it's like, 
I want to have this like perfect hourglass body, right? Or I want to have like 15 pounds off the scale or whatever. And it's like, those are results and they'll probably happen if you have a process and then just standards, right? Standards that you live by. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I have standards, you know what I mean? Like, I think we said earlier, like you were like, I just can't imagine like not working out or not wanting to work out. Like it's just crazy, right? Because they haven't set those standards yet. Mm -hmm. Once you have those standards, you're like, no, I, when I go on vacation, I go work out. Like, that's just yeah. my standard. It's not because like yeah. I lose 10 pounds. It's like, no, that's just what I do. That's who I right. am. Like, yeah, I take care of myself. Like I want to, and I'm going to eat the healthy food and I'm going to, you yeah. know, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm only going to drink, you know, three rum and Cokes, not five. So, <laughs> well, for me, it was me. 30. So I no longer do that, but, uh, I'm going to bring my gummies now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We got the gummies. Yeah, that's a great segue into our next part of the show. Gummies <laughs> with Steph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there smokes a lot, Steph. I'm, kidding. I'm totally kidding. Uh, but no, this, those are phenomenal points. I think most people skip that stuff because it's the woo woo stuff. It doesn't matter. Just tell me what to eat. It's like, no, dude, yeah. like you're going to be coming back to me in six weeks going, this program sucks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The other part I was thinking too, which I've just learned over and over is that people who pay, pay attention. So hire somebody, if you have to like hire yeah. a coach, right? Put your, like put we your- all did. Put yep. some skin in the game because you know what? It's going to hurt a lot more when you've paid $1,400 for the next six months of coaching or three months of coaching or whatever that looks like to quit, right? People yep. pay, pay attention. And it's just true. It's just the truth. If yep. you have a little skin in the game, you're going to, you're going to put more effort into doing the thing. It sounds 100%. silly, but if you ask someone like, what's your mortgage payment or how much have you put it into your home? Mm-hmm. And you go, well, damn, like I've put, you know, six figures into my home more, probably more in some cases, you know, some of these people we talk to are like seven figures, eight figures into their homes. Right. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, that's why you care so much about your home because you've put an enormous amount of resources into it. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes, you live in your home. Oh, it's my home. I live here. So you don't live in your body. Where do you you live exactly, sir? Do I need to call security? (laughs) This is getting weird. Right. right? Yeah. So that's, but that's like, I'm sure all of our supplement bill is, uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Think about all the money you put into just dumb stuff. Like I had a a client text me this morning. It was so funny. He was like, I just went through a list of all the crap I've bought over the past six months that I still haven't even opened. And it's it's like thousands of dollars. And I'm like, yeah, really? Why are you telling me this? He was like, well, I was just, you know, telling you because you always tell me what I pay for. I pay attention to, and I don't pay attention to this stuff. I said, yeah, because it's not enough. Like you're just putting little Mm. drops of money into things, right? That's a problem with fitness. You know, they buy the $20 program, the $30 program. Yeah. They go to the $15 class, they buy the $20 supplement or whatever. It's like, yeah, you don't care about that because it's not painful. You need to yeah. take all that money. You gotta feel it, man. Put it into one thing, <laughs> you know, like really yeah. feel it. You know? I'm not forgetting to take my supplements, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> right. My yeah, highest bill, bill a month is my supplements, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because it's that. energy, you know, it's energy. You know, I love the universal fuel, laws. Man. It's your I'm mind, a, it's your gut. Yeah, exactly. It's it's um the money part, it's, it's funny. Cause I'm, I'm deaf. I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, like all those things, but I yeah. also believe in universal laws. I think they're, they're tied together. And I think that money is just a form of energy, right? Yeah. So if we put all these little bits of energy into things like, yeah, we're not going to get a lot of energy back from them. Mm-hmm. Right. But you put more energy that is a like significant and meaningful amount into your fitness using, like you said, Chris and a coach, I mean, it, that payoff, that ROI will be so massive because you are now, I don't want to say forced, but like you are now saying, okay, that is an enormous amount of resources and time that I use to create this wealth. Let me put it into this. Totally going to pay more attention that way. Totally going to pay way more attention. Well, and it sounds cliche. People say it all the time, but if you don't put money into your fitness, you're going to end up, what do they say? Spending your money on your illness. Yeah. If you think health is expensive, like what is more expensive than being chronically ill or being on medication for life that's causing the side effect or the other side effect and the other side effect and the other side effect and now you have this and i like it's oh it's crazy it's what they want you to believe but totally i mean have you bought two airplane seats next to each other to fit into the airplane like have you noticed how much that costs yeah it's outrageous not saying everybody will get to that extreme yeah but Yes. Health costs down the line are insane. I've seen 
bills that would blow people's minds for procedures yeah. oh, and yeah. all these things. Like, it's just, it's scary. And I'm like, <clears throat> dude, if you just avoid like 80% of those, it would more than like triple the ROI on investing in, in the, I, yeah. it, it probably even way more than that. Right. Like oh, yeah, exactly. hundreds of thousands of dollars saved. Yeah. yeah. It's and you're, just the bottom line is you're worth it. You know, you're worth yes. the investment. You're worth the time and energy that it takes to do it. Um, I think a lot of times, like especially as women or moms or parents or whatever, you get into this silly belief that somehow it's selfish to put yourself first. Steph's always saying you can't pour from an empty yeah. cup. You know, it's like the airplane. You got to put the mask on yourself first, right, before you can help anybody else. And I mean, it's just it's just facts. It's just the truth. you got to take good care of yourself or you're not going to be able to take good care of anybody else. So anybody mm -hmm. that tries to tell you you're being selfish for taking good care of yourself is someone who's looking for an excuse for themselves not to do yeah. something. And just, just, just like you were saying, just yeah. like you want your spouse to look at you and be like, Oh, Hey, you know what I mean? Like if you want to be loved properly too, you have to show the person that loves you that you're worth you're going to fight for yourself. You're going to do the things you're going to do hard work. You're not going to just settle. Cause I'll tell you what, nothing is more unattractive than somebody who just doesn't do anything, you know, totally. like Every if you're not going to do anything for yourself. You're not going to do anything for the rest of the things that matter to you. 1000%, 1000%. I mean, every time my wife walks by me, she's reminded with a booty slap <laughs> how important RDLs are Romanian deadlifts. It's, it's a loving, it's a loving reminder that her work is paying off. Absolutely. But, yeah. I but yeah, it. I mean, that's that's how it. I mean, yeah, there's there's a natural desire in all of us, going back to the dawn of whenever we were created. You know, precisely creation. There was something in us that led us to want to be healthy and fit. There's a little voice that will tell you it matters, right? A lot of you want, a lot of people want to ignore it and say, oh, I'm being selfish. And blah, blah, blah. I would argue that's like, I don't want to say evil, but that, yeah, it could be like the, the evil devil on yeah. your shoulder saying like, no, dude, like suffer. It's, it's totally fine. But like yeah. the voice that calls you to be better and to fill up your cup like that is real, man. And that is, that is something you should buy into because it, it, it does matter. And love does not lie. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, and like what you said, Kristen, about like, Hey, you, you're worth it. You know, you're not selfish. Like a lot of people just need to hear that. You know, I think a lot of people's self-worth is in the tank and they just, yeah. they don't hear that enough, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's really true. You are worth it. And you know, your, your identity, our identity is not found in what our body looks like, or, you know, anything like that, but our, our body is the temple of the Holy spirit. God literally sure. lives within us. We have to take care of, we have a, we have an obligation, obligation to take good yeah. care of ourselves and we can't go out and advance the kingdom. We can't go out and help other people. We can't love our neighbors the way we should, if we're not taking good care of ourselves. It's just, um, it's just so important. It's just, you're so worth it. Well, well, we'll save part two with the gummies and everything. <laughs> next time. We'll, we'll get it. We, we, Pizza, we covered the Holy ice Spirit. cream and gummy Fridays. Okay. <laughs> we covered the Holy Spirit. Balance. We'll talk about Holy Smokes next time. Balance, man. Uh, balance. Just, just a little, just a little tiny. Just a little we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back now. Um, yeah. So ladies, where can people connect with you? This has been great. I know my audience, especially our Transform Her audience full of ladies that are looking to do all the things that you guys talk about, where can they connect with you? Obviously your podcast, but give them the whole rundown, everything you got. Yeah. We host activate podcasts, find us wherever you listen to podcasts, activate with a K I'm Kristen Lee Ballard, Kristen with an I, I'm a 10 out of 10 on Instagram. Um, that's where you can find me. That's where I talk to most people is through Instagram these days. Um, and Steph, Instagram. Yeah, I'm Steph underscore view. It's V is in Victor, I E A U. Um, and just Steph View on Facebook. So either of those places. I know you guys have a program. We I, I sucked at promoting it throughout the podcast. We just got too oh. deep into the game of we've got a bunch of discussions. different things. We got hormones. What's, we can what's the number with? one thing? Yeah, yeah, talk about the hormones real quick. Where what, what are you what's it all about? I think, yeah, for, for us, I, I think our big biggest thing is collagen we promote collagen we love collagen it's so important literally every single person over the age of 25 should be supplementing with it um so we talk all about that all the time uh, but you can and we have this new like hero product that's helping women everywhere with hormones you know menstrual and 
perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, like women are suffering. And it's something that people aren't talking enough about. Um, So we have a new product hormone free that um, is just literally changing people's lives. Yeah. And even for, you know, for me, like I'm a gut health specialist, I'm holistic, you know, that's my whole jam. So a lot of gut health stuff, but this specific, um, it's two different products. Um, But even as like as young as, you know, teenagers that are about to start their, you know, cycle or they have, you know, when I, when we were kids, you just were put on birth control. If you had heavy cycles and things like that. And that's really where you start to get into all of this mess, right? Like you're not supposed to be giving your body fake hormones. You're not, you know what I mean? So, um, it is a really big deal. Uh, we can definitely, um, talk to you. I like to do consults with people. So, you know, there's always root causes. Let's get to the root instead of, um, treating the symptoms and yeah, but our collagen is game changer for, you know, gut health for, you know, of course we, we love it when people are like, oh my gosh, I look so much younger. I, you know, my hair and my nails and this and that, but it's, it's more about the injuries and the, you know, um, joints and the ways to protect your body, um, even than that. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'm going to have to have, I'll, I'll make a commitment besides kicking Kristen's ass. In a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've committed to that. I will come and do CrossFit. It's totally fine. I will, I will, you know, dip my toes in the water. Uh, but, um, not ice pass that is, but just, (laughs) but but I do want to have you both back to talk about, uh, menopausal, uh, stuff, because that's more than anything. I think the question I get the most from ladies, uh, as they've, you know, crossed into their fifties, sixties and beyond, or maybe even forties, you know, like, like, what about this phase of my life? Like, how does, how do things change? What do I need to do? And I I say, stop being a little bitch. And I'm just kidding. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's a big deal too. And in those phases that they're going through, what your body needs is nutrition. And that's what, this is what we work Mm. with. It's all intuitive nutrition. It's not, again, it's not giving your body fake things, um, or a medication that you have to take for life, you know? So addressing all of that, um, through every stage, um, that's important. Um, Anytime you can give your body and, you know, nothing in this country wants you to know that. Um, but, uh, anywhere else in the world that you look, I literally say it all the time. You look at a third world country, they're wearing plants, they're eating plants. They're 110 years old. They don't have autoimmune disease. They don't have these cancers. They don't have depression. They, you know, it's for a reason, uh, plants have been God created plants, for, you know, for healing, um, period. And, you know, when you can give your body that, um, instead of the other things, you're just going to succeed far into the, the, your, your entire life. Um, mm. that's just, it's the difference. Yeah. We'll do a whole hour podcast on that. Uh, that's a must, cool. uh, awesome. and, uh, we'll, we'll crush that. Cause yeah, I know we, <laughs> we're just so wrapped up in the mindset, which is good. Like, this is what yeah. like people really we can't need. help it. <laughs> yeah. People are like, but I want to hear about menopause. Well, sorry. Yeah. Well, next time <laughs> we we'll, we'll all do gummies Absolutely. and we'll talk about menopause. <laughs> yeah. It'll be the most interesting podcast you've ever heard. We may so still not sleep. talk about Those menopause. are plans too. <laughs> <I'll be asleep. laughs> yeah. Yeah, it may not sound like we're talking about menopause, but I promise you. Here we are. <laughs> sure. we are yeah. Oh, this <laughs> is Thanks awesome. so much Thank for joining so the much show. For having us. Thank yeah. you. Kristen, we're going to have you out to work out. We're going to record the whole thing. So, oh just... boy. Okay. Okay. Wear your Jesus deadlift sweatshirt. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get my long shoe strings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Trip it up. Trip it up. <laughs> that wraps up today's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the True Transformation podcast. And don't forget to check out Butcher Box. My kids are absolutely over the moon with these chicken nuggets. You can get chicken nuggets for a year plus 10% off your first box when you go to butcherbox.com forward slash true and use code true, T-R-U-E at checkout. Go check them out. They're great friends of mine. And man, they have an incredible product. Excited for you to check out their meats and their nuggets and just make eating healthy that much more convenient. Until next time, life moves fast. Make it count. Talk to you soon. Peace.